Uh, Nick, uh, could you tell us a little bit about Max Connections? Uh, what is the optimal setting uh, for Max Connections in Postgres? Yeah, well, okay. Uh, uh, jumping right to this topic. Okay, so great. Uh, Max Connections should be low. <laughs> this is the general rule. So especially if you have old Postgres before Postgres 13 or 14, where um, optimization was implemented by uh, Andres Freud. And uh, if you set very high max connections, first of all, imagine like, okay, you have, for example, how many how many cores, how many VCPUs do you have? 96, for example, quite, quite good server, Intel maybe, not the latest, generation but already very good big server and you set max connections to 10,000 for example I had this case recently uh, we, we need to consider several situations first of all why do you do it like you do it for example in the hope that uh, if a lot of uh, queries will come we will be able to to execute them right but 10,000 is a huge number. It's a really huge number. If you have like about 100 vCPUs, uh, if you have around 100 active sessions, it's already, already a super busy server. If you have 200 active sessions, 300 active sessions, I bet you're already down. Like You are down. <laughs> so you won't reach a few hundred active sessions it's like kind of like it's already the worst like not the worst but it's already in p1 like priority one or severity one incident and database is down already and even worse yeah, the more queries are coming requests to execute a query a sql query are coming the war it, it, it makes execution of already being executed queries worse so it doesn't help. It's better to tell new queries we don't have room out of connections and, and leave some chances to execute already being processed queries than uh, to continue promising. promising. Um, it, these promises won't be <laughs> uh, accomplished, right? So, so... So it doesn't matter. Like this, this is this is one situation when we hope that we will be able to execute a lot of uh, queries in parallel, like hundreds. No, same for for hundred cores, hundred VCPUs, logical cores. Same same uh, a same value would be two three hundred max connections. That's it. But uh, there are other states of session idle and also idle transaction. Idle transaction. I would say it's slightly like lighter than active. It's just not doing something, but probably we keep, we already acquired some logs and we keep holding them. And this may be a problem for other sessions. So I would say also like two, three, four hundred sessions being idle on transaction already a problem. So it doesn't change this approach. Still, I think like for hundred cores, we need like a couple of 300 or 300 uh, max connections to keep this and final thing is idle connections idle okay idle we can keep many of them but with old postgres like for example 12 uh, if you check the overhead of 1000 or 2000 idle connections you just can run pg bench uh, default behavior uh, load testing uh, and not not just load testing stress testing to see maximum tps and then add a thousand or a couple of thousand idle connections. TPS will go down significantly, very noticeably. As I remember, it was like a couple of, uh, like maybe 20, 30% noticeably. In the latest Postgres version, the things improved. So idle connections don't hit so so bad. But I, I don't know numbers. So it's, it's a good question to check with small experiment. But anyway, uh, like, thousand idle connections it's maybe like not not what you want probably right so uh, i would say i'm like old school guy and and this approach is maybe old like 400 cores 300 maximum 500 max connections thousand it's already not good Ten thousand, it's insane 
don't do it. For modern Postgres, maybe like it's not that bad. If you only rely like on idle, most of them are going to be idle. Why this like why people do it? Because they uh, have a lot of application nodes around Postgres, right? And uh, uh, they have usually uh, pooling on application side, like Ruby or like Ruby on Rails or Django, Hikari CP if it's Java or something like that. And they have have like something like 20, 40, 50 connections pool size. And uh, before something like Black Friday, people say, oh, it's server, uh, it's um, stateless. We can easily double this, the number of application nodes, but they hesitate uh, decreasing pool sizes. So suddenly Postgres uh, have many more idle connections, right? And that's that's how we end up having a lot of idle connections even they are not used. Like, I mean, they're idle, right? Because workload doesn't change a lot in this case. So, yeah, and and for older versions of Postgres, it was a problem. For newer, it's worth checking. But I prefer same values, like take number of vCPUs, multiply by three or maximum five, and uh, have some connection pooling, which is uh, controlled well. There you can have t thousands of connections to application nodes. If, for example, if you have PG Bowser or some of newer uh, pooling, which recently was deployed, like we have several of new connection poolers, right? And then, you, then Postgres is saying, because if you don't have resources to run thousands of backends, if you have only uh, above something like uh, 96 uh, vCPUs or 126, 28, for example, newer, newer Intel, or, or maybe 200. So like, it's not thousands. Yeah, I'm, I, maybe that was it was too detailed answer, right? So <laughs> let me know if you want uh, yeah, so to how move about, faster. Uh, how about limiting connections per user, uh, Nick? So uh, hmm. it's useful in some cases because uh, if you have hundreds of users, one user might <laughs> eat up a lot of connections. Sometimes uh, having that user level limit, uh, when you create a role, you can... Yeah. Uh, alter, alter user, alter role and set max connections. That's a great thing. In general, I I very like I do like this approach. Segment like you think about uh, whole whole workload and all possible users. First of all, distinguishing users is it's a very good thing, because you can you can manage them separately and uh, and can, you can say okay, we expect like we our application is split to to some segments and this segment is this user database user this. This segment is different database user, and then you can alter and set max connections to them. It's a great idea, I think, like a great idea. But it requires a significant effort, right? And I, I, I would say not many people use this, unfortunately. Yeah. But yeah, this is great to do. Yeah, sometimes to throttle the usage, I think that is yeah. But but uh, like you said, it it adds the maintenance overhead <laughs> of uh, managing. Yeah. Yeah, it's on your shoulders. So basically, it, you if you don't do it, it's fully elastic. So if you have, for example, five different users, they can any spike can consume the whole quota, right? If you start using this approach, you have five quotas, and it requires your attention to to maintain them because sometimes you need to increase it. But uh, so this is a price maintenance cost. But uh, benefits are obvious. If some user becomes suddenly too hungry for connections, others don't suffer from it, right? But again, if you if these quotas already exceed the number of vCPUs, and one of users uh, reach this, like for example, we have ninety six cores, or we have one hundred twenty eight cores, and we have five users, each of them have two hundred uh, max connections. And total is one thousand. Okay, it it won't protect us from downtime. I think if one of the users suddenly created two hundred connections and all of them are active sessions, yeah. most likely you are already down because we don't have so much power to execute them, or it will be extremely slow already. Right here, probably we also need to think about statement timeout and uh, to finish uh, slow query fast, slow queries, slow queries faster, and so on. So, so I I would like in terms of protection from 
a server being overloaded, I would think about total max connections as well. But if you have some small por small portion of workload, which is, uh, you know, like you, no more than, for example, 10 users are needed. So just limited, like quota, that's it. And this is good. Good thing. And uh, I've seen cases where people properly configure at the DB level, but they miss at the PG bouncer level because there is a limited PG bouncer level as well for max connections, right? Uh, so what do you recommend? Let's say people are using a PG bouncer, uh, what should be max connections at uh, DB level versus uh, PG bouncer level? Uh, well, that's a good question. So there are pool sizes and also there is a connection. I don't, I don't, PG bouncer configuration is a whole separate topic uh, because, yeah, because uh, documentation is not uh, detailed and uh, some things you just learn from practice. I don't remember these max, uh, like, I don't remember the setting, but the setting which defines the maximum number of incoming connections from clients to PG bouncer, right? Uh, yeah. But usually we set it very high, like sometimes like ten thousand or so, or so, because we know that these connections it's not Postgres backend, right? Yeah, we can keep them. And uh, the biggest problem PG Bouncer ha can have is uh, uh, it's still not using threads. So uh, the danger when you grow, the danger is to hit a single single core. Uh, CPU, so 100% of single core. You can have, for example, 16 cores, but if you run only single PG bouncer process uh, at at level rough, like for modern uh, processors at level roughly like 10 or 15, maybe 20,000 queries per second, uh, you will reach this uh, limit, like uh, capacity, uh, single CPU, single core CPU. And this can, cannot be solved by running only a single PG bouncer. But a uh, number of incoming connections only indirectly uh, leads to this. So w workload matters. How many like messages go through PG bouncer? How many uh, queries go through PG bouncer? Uh, if if uh, you have 10,000 connections, but most of them don't run anything, the CPU level will be not 100%, right? So we can have very high number there and PG bouncer can, can can keep a lot of connected clients right yeah so, the so this mm -hmm. uh, the default for pg bouncer is 100 i mean uh, i face some issues myself like uh, we forget to change that and uh, right yeah, we, yeah we, we see it all the time we check oh, okay so people hesitate to raise it but we say just raise it we need to raise it and then control uh, cpu usage uh single CPU usage. And also we need to control uh, how it's called client wait time or something like uh, how uh, basically additional latency, which when when clients start waiting before uh, they can, they, there are no, there are, pool size is already uh, exhausted. You're right, right, right. So, so this is, these are two main things you need to monitor in PG Bouncer. But uh, yeah, 10,000. Not a problem. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the PG Tune uh, uh, gives these defaults. Uh, if you use OLTP, it is recommending 300. Web yeah. 300 uh, and but it should depend on the size of uh, the instance, right? So it's not like 200 for everyone. Like if I have only four vCPUs, a tiny machine, 200 is too much for it. I would say for four, four vCPUs, a small machine, I would say, okay, like something like, I don't know, 24, 32 max connections, small number, 20, 30, 40, like 40 already 10x of my vCPUs. So I need to understand how many cores I, I can use, Postgres can use. This is the key uh, thing to in terms of max connections. Also max connections, when we talk about them, we need to uh, to think about memory management, right? So if we... Yeah. have really really high max connections value like 10,000 how many backends are really running and how much memory do they consume this is the key topic because out of memory I know you have it in, later in your plan this is the key topic as well it becomes key topic not only we saturate uh, our resources in terms of CPU but also in terms of uh, memory right yeah. yeah 
So and, uh, how about uh, super uh, user reserved connections, uh, Nick? Uh, Three, five. Three. It's good to have. <laughs> right. They come to rescue when there is a need. <laughs> but it won't help you if you are on RDS, right? Because they don't provide you super super user. They provide only some RDS super user, which is not RDS admin or something, right? And yeah. I think it. I do. Do you know if it if this additional setting uh, is working for that kind of user, which is not actual super user? I actually don't know. This is an interesting question. So we do when we reached uh, the state uh, like too many clients, we definitely want to connect. Uh, DBA wants to connect, right? Yep. To, to to see what's happening and so on. And this is good setting to have, for sure. And one thing about RDS Aurora is uh, depending, I mean, the max connections, they automatically determine depending on the instance size. Uh, in the on-prem world, we set right like, but uh, when you spin up a RDS or other instance, the max connections varies depending on the instance size. They do that automatically. Yeah, they they have some rules. Yeah, but all, also like they don't they won't multiply it by hundred. <laughs> so, I mean, a number of course.